Hi there, Artlets. How's everybody today? I've missed you. It's been a few weeks. I hope you had good holidays. Good Canada Day, good Fourth of July, and any other holidays that might have come along. I was actually away. Hi, Elaine. Welcome. Hi, Yogi. I've been actually away. We were hiking in the Rockies, the Canadian Rockies, and I'm still exhausted. <laughs> Hi, Kathy Joe. I'm here. You're here. We're all here. So, forgive me if I'm fumbling today. There, I'm sitting down now. Can you hear me all right? I'm still exhausted from my hiking trip. <laughs> you know, sometimes you should think twice. No, not at all. It was fabulous. It was incredible. I love the Canadian Rockies. We were at Lake Louise and it was just fabulous the first day. <laughs> and then the weather kind of came in and you couldn't see the mountains, which is kind of disappointing, but that's the way it goes in the mountains. It's the worst weather we've had while we were away, but we still did some great things and saw some beautiful things and um, it was great. It was very short. Okay, so we're going to soar and stencil today. And I'll show you the card that we're going to use. We're going to use, we're going to make it. There. How does that look? So that's it. Oh, hang on a second. I'm trying to wake up my monitor here as usual. It never likes to tell me that I'm live and what's happening. So let me show you what supplies I'm going to use today. To make this card, we're going to use the Soar die, of course. We're going to use the Soar collection of clear rubber stamps. And that has a whole bunch of um, encouraging and affirmative uh, quotes. And I really like encouraging quotes. Um, and the one we're going to use is, you were born with greatness, you were born with wings, learn to use them and fly. And that's why we have little butterflies of different sizes there. And a little heart that's flying, but we're not going to use that today. And the other thing we're going to use is the Away With Words stencils, the feathers. And we're not going to use this part. We're just going to use the down as the background. So the little, you know, every time I look at this, and I know it was a whole feather, but I think of um, Forrest Gump and the feather that floats away. Anyway, great movie. And the paper we're going to use is the specialty stamping paper because you all know that I'm, this is made by uh, Ranger, and you all know that I'm uh, blending challenged, so I have to use the right paper for the right job. So, and this specialty stamping paper is uh, matte coated cardstock. And it just, it's a bit smoother than a lot of papers. So, and what else am I using for this? Um, I'm going to use Distress Inks. I think you can just see those in the, the uh, in view. And I'm using Mustard Seed. Kathy Joe. I have squeezed lemon on that list. It's not, it's Mustard Seed. Cracked Pistachio and Peacock Feathers, because I wanted to go for this nice, bright, happy kind of summery look. Um, so I was looking for bright colors. Let me just move those out of the way. Ooh, <laughs> big noise. That's the packaging hitting the floor because I don't have a lot of room here. Um, okay, just let me see if I can get something happening. Hmm, no, it's, I don't know why I have so much trouble. I, I think I need to get um, a laptop. And oh, there it is. I finally see it now. And then I think I finally smartened up to go get the comments showing. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> they just disappeared. I saw them flash by comments off. No, I want to see the comments though. 
There we go. Okay, so let's get started with this. Um, the first thing uh, you want to do, and of course I can't find it now. I had it lined up here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, uh, what else should I tell you? Oh, Versamar Magic Turquoise Gem is what we're going to stamp with. Uh, there's the two colors of cardstock, and this is this is the basil um, turquoise. Oh no, not turquoise gem. That's um, it's Navajo. It's called, and it actually comes in different shades. It's not called Navajo in the other shades, but I really love. There's a set of three that are are in the same uh, color range, and then this is uh, coordinations, which is um, Scotch. It's called, and I just grabbed them because. They look kind of good. You could, you don't have to use these exact ones. Find a turquoise, find a, a yellow that looks really good together, and it's great. Um, Coordinations and uh, Basil are owned by American Crafts, so it's all from the same company. Okay, let's move that. Now, what I've been wanting to do is try makeup brushes, and there's a lot of companies now selling makeup brushes or brushes for stenciling, and I thought, well, no, I, I need some faster than that. So I went and bought some makeup brushes just from Amazon and they came in within a couple of days and uh, they were about $15 Canadian. So I'm guessing, you know, maybe $11 US for a set of seven. And uh, they work really well on this stencil because the stencil is actually pretty detailed. Let's move this over here. Hopefully so you can see it in the corner. Can you see that? Yes, you can sort of see that here. I'll move the move the distress inks down a little bit. There. Okay, and this is my piece of uh, the specialty stamping paper. And these are full eight and a half by 11 sheets and I've cut this one in half. And um, the situation, oh, naughty thing. The situation I have here is that this panel um, I actually, my, my down is, is not wide enough to cover the whole background panel. So what I've done is um, created a little, created little registration marks. So what you do is, and this is just um, this a scotch removable tape, and I put it along the side to hinge the, the stencil and taped it down so it'll come off nicely, taped it down to the uh, specialty stamping paper. And um, now that I'm going to take my pencil and I'm, there's, there's four little holes and I'm just going to take my pencil and mark those and we're gonna use those in a few minutes. And then all I have to do is take off the top of my, ugh, this, mustard seed is really tight fit. Have any of you had that happening with your distress oxides? Just that one. Oh, it's not an oxide. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Oh, I'm mixing and matching. You think they'll be okay? That's not a, a distress oxide pad. That's just the regular pad. Well, isn't that interesting? And they get along just fine. Okay, so I've got that taped down to the specialty stamping paper over on the left hand side. I've marked the four uh, registration marks. And now with this, I'm just going to um, pat some color down beside the, the little down bits um, because I don't want to, to put too much ink down there. I don't want it really, really um, the background really, really dark because then what happens is the, um, the away with words die that sits on top can uh, be hard to read. And I see that all the time with designers that forget that words can sometimes be hard to see. Not the quiet fire design designers. And I'm just tapping this in in a few places and brushing it. Um, not everywhere on the little down bits. Okay, and then I'm gonna change over and this is the cracked pistachio. And again, this doesn't seem quite as juicy, but wait till we get to the peacock feathers. Talk about juicy, holy. 
And the thing about adding color, like maybe three colors, it seems to give a lot of depth to the look. So we're just going to blend that in there a bit. Sorry, I can't speed this up. <laughs> we're live. <laughs> work a little faster so you're not bored to death. There we go. And because it's hinged here, you can lift this up at any time and have a look at how things are progressing. Okay, I'm going to put that down and pick up another. There's there's, and I don't even know what company it is. There's a company that's just put out a set of uh, these um, makeup type brushes for stenciling and they're all different colors and they're all the same size and they have a little stand and they're the cutest things ever. And yes, I'll probably end up having to buy them at some point, but <laughs> I wanted to share this. So I'm just using makeup brushes and they're, they're bristles. They're not sponges. Sponges would work. But because this is such a detailed stencil, it seems to, uh, the these bristles get right into the little grooves and work really well. And it gives it a nice, gentle um, transition in the blending. Okay, how are we doing? Yes, I'm, not getting the comments again as usual. Let's see if I can get those. Hang on. Comments on, it says now. We'll see if I'm really seeing that. <laughs> Maybe nobody's commenting. That's why I'm not getting the comments. Oh, there we go. I see them now. Kathy Joe's giving you the information. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, cute. Okay, I'm happy with that the way it is. I've checked it over. Now what I'm going to do is lift this up and these little holes that I marked before, I'm going to move over and I'm going to put that hole over that pencil mark and I'm going to come down and I'm going to put the other hole over the other pencil mark. And I have done this before so I know that the it, this won't smear, <laughs> which was kind of Nice. And then I'm just going to repeat the whole thing over again. Maybe I can do it a little faster this time. Da -da -da. Talk amongst yourselves. actually don't need to go right over to the edge. Let's put the lid back on there before I have an accident. And then come over here. I'm convinced makeup brushes are very nice for these detailed and I have had some detailed stencils in the, the past and then the last thing is see how strong that peacock feathers is now I don't know whether it's the color or whether it's um, my particular pad is just very juicy almost done And there we have it. I think I like the first one, but I took more time with the first one. And then you just take that off and it's the repeating pattern continues across the, the whole line without, without being offset or it, it works 
really well. Now, the other thing you can do with this, because there's holes up here, is if you have a bigger background that you want to do, you just take the, the holes and line them up that way. And you could do the same over here. I, I ran out of room, but um, you would put in more holes if you were going further across the page. Okay, so there's that. Now, the next thing I would do is probably let that dry for a little bit just to be safe. Uh, and then I would trim the paper to that size, which is about five and a half inches by three and three quarter inches. And by the magic of television, I have a piece just like that. Okay. Now, let me just put these lids back on and get these out of the way. And then the next step is going to be to stamp on here. And I just want to show you um, some of the differences about stamping. Now, I don't know whether you can see that, but this is soft finish cardstock and it is beautiful for blending. There's no question about it. It has that lightly pebbled surface, but it does not take stamping very well, at least my stamps. Um, and, um, and because it's pebbled, it, it, the uh, ink when you stamp it down hits the high points, but doesn't go into the groove. So you end up with this very model-y um, look to the stamp. And I mean, we calligraphers work so hard to get this you know, perfection going with thicks and thins and and uh, high contrast and it's kind of disappointing when that happens. So that's why I did not use that today. There'll be a test afterwards, so I hope you're paying attention. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, so this is the um, stamping widget that I have. All right, let's just totally get rid of these ink pads. stamp positioner and I have already put the stamp on here and this is a piece of transparency that I've hinged on with a piece of um, washi tape so that I can move it and I can check the stamp position that way and then what I'm going to do because this is lettering, I, I do this extra step because it needs to be straight. If it was a flower, it wouldn't matter if it was, you know, five degrees off. But because it's lettering, it needs to be straight. So I'm just going to, yeah, that's about the same. And you want it to be not too close to the edge. And you want it to be straight because it's already trimmed. I mean, if it was a bigger piece, you could trim it again. I don't know. It looks pretty good from here. Okay, and I'm going to put the magnet on there. And if you're really worried about it because you've done all this work on the background, can you see that I'm just patting the, uh, the ink on the, the stamp? And this is Versamark, and I love... Ver um, First magic uh, from uh, Imagine Crafts, and it's a chalk ink, and I love it because it maintains. It sits up on the card; it doesn't bleed in, and it um, keeps those sharp thicks and thins uh, really well. So, what I prefer to do with this this sort of thing, and I'm I'm just going to do a test stamp just to make sure nothing shifted is just tap it lightly and then come up. And yes, that's still in the right place. So I'm going to take, that's the transparency and I'm going to flip it out of the way. And just to be double sure, I'm going to put another magnet in place and then I'm going to tap ink on the stamp. And then I'm going to come over and lightly press. And you can see I missed a whole lot but that's okay because you're using the stamp positioner. You can go back and re-stamp it and you can still read the, um, the fine lines. You can still, it hasn't turned into a blob. And 
that's just about got it. You know what? There's a hair on there. It's that darn kitty. No, it's not. It's too short to be the kitty. But you can see and didn't come out very well. Well, I can go back over and just give and a little love pat with the, the stamp pad and hit it again. And that clears, I, I, I might even do it again. What the heck, eh? Lovely, bit thicker than I'd want, but good to go. So there we have that. Take that off and put this away. Next step, we're just going to add the die cut. So I die cut, all right, where did you go guys? So I thought I'd go with just sore. And I, so, yeah, I am just going with sore, but in one color, in the turquoise. And then I thought, hmm, sometimes if you get that background a little too strong, it kind of sucks the word in and the word disappears. So what I decided to do was die cut sore in the yellow as well and create a drop shadow. And if your background is ever too loud for the die cut, this just, thickens the word up a little bit by doing this this technique and right now it's almost right on top of each other but you just want it sl ever so slightly offset it and it thickens it up and um, makes it a little more a little stronger image on the background I have one that's already put together in there and I quite like that look so you were born to soar. And then what I'll do is just take the, the old glue dots, and you've seen me do this before, and I use my handiest tool, and that's my fingernails. And just, and you don't have to be quite as, when you do this drop shadow technique, you don't have to be quite as careful because you have more room. And the uh, glue dot isn't as likely to show on the front. Let's put that there. Now hopefully you can eyeball this. If not, you can use the T-square, which I sometimes do and I've shown you before. You can just line this up and uh, draw a line with your pencil and then sit the die cut on the baseline. So I'm going to use this and put that down there to get that straight. It's a little hard to tell from this angle. Normally I would stand over it. And there you have it. Just make sure that's pressed down. And then you're going to cut a mat out of the turquoise and another mat slightly larger out of the yellow and then this is a five by seven card base and you're going to put the whole thing on there and I almost always I have this this thing and this is how I work is I'll do a couple of mats and I'll do them flat and then the last step the whole panel will be lifted up with um, the uh, scrapbook adhesives 3D foam squares. And it just gives it a little dimension and stuff's happening and it makes it a more interesting design. So I think I've dealt with everything here. Any questions? I'm happy to to take questions, to answer questions if I can. So basically what we did is we registered the stencil and we moved it to create a background pattern. We color blended through the stencil. We stamped on the background. We added away with words die cut with a drop shadow and created a layered card.
And there we have it. Nice, bright, encouraging card for somebody. Uh, graduation, somebody that's changing jobs, um, that's going through a change in their life. They're going to quit their day job and they're going to become an artist. You might want to rethink that. <laughs> Okay, so thanks for joining me. It's been a pleasure. I've missed doing these. But I'll be back next week. And we'll do something different. Not quite sure what yet, but we'll come up with something, I'm sure. So thanks for dropping by. Come anytime. Ask me questions. You know where to find me on the web. Okay, I'll leave you now.